When welcome to Raven's Realm Tabletop. Here we are playing the uh, Cypher system today, uh, DM'd by our lovely Brandon. And the module that we'll be playing is called the Crypt of the Everflame. Thank you for the save. Uh, Crypt of the Everflame. Uh, and this is our first time playing the cyber system, and we have yet to create our characters, so, um, Brandon, why don't you introduce yourself? Howdy, folks. I'm Brandon. I'll be your GM, storyteller, MC, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're finally going to be running the cybers. Those of you who know me definitely know that I have enjoy this system, especially for cinematic and style, like, D&D content. So, uh, yeah, I'm super psyched. Uh, the Everflame is a Pathfinder first edition classic. It was kind of, it was actually the first module ever written, published for Pathfinder. It was, the setting didn't even exist yet. They were just getting shit out the door. Um, so yeah, it's around near math. It's going proud to take the flame that burns forever it back to town to the rest of the intros hey i'm chris i'm gonna be playing a character that is yet to be built but uh, i'm excited to be here uh, justin hey i'm justin born excited to be here like i am every week <laughs> uh i have no character to describe other than maybe a knight who knows ryan to you oh um yeah i'm ryan again uh, I'll pass it oh, over to Kai. Get it. That's right. Huh. <laughs> We're the first one, and then uh, yeah, it all blends together when we start to do it before we do it. <laughs> uh, hi everybody, I'm Kai. I also don't have a character yet, but I am excited to create one. Sweet. All right. Well then, let's get to business. So. We are actually kind of changing up our format. We're going to do character creation on stream as like a session zero, and also a rules description type. Uh, once we get through all of that, hopefully we'll get out of town and heading towards the Crypt of the Everflame. So let's start with concepts, right? Chris, why don't you take it away? What was what character concept were you kind of loosely thinking? It doesn't have to be scripture type focuses or anything like that. Just tell us about the character idea. All right. So basically, I had the concept for like a dwarf pirate type of guy. Um, so that that leaned me towards explorer, mm -hmm. and um, so I'm I'm. Pretty sure I'm gonna stick to that explorer type. Explorer who sails yeah. under Jolly Roger. Yes, uh, focus. that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sweet. And then we gotta figure out descriptor and all of that, and then we'll have kind of the building box to make that character. Oh right, so I actually I found a descriptor that I liked, which was dishonorable. Oh yeah. <laughs> I feel like that fit him pretty well. So even if it's not uh, Milo Underhand, it's it's basically <laughs> Milo Underhand. Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> He's right. the rogue, but of the sea. Uh -huh. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Ryan, concept. What were you yes. thinking for your character build? I was thinking about playing a speaker, um, and their concept would be uh, the reason that they are adventuring and new to adventuring is because um, they, they're very popular within the town that we are starting in. Um, amongst the people. However, they recently got a diagnosis uh, that is not in their favor. Um, so they decided to turn to adventuring uh, and trying to make the most of what time they have left as they are living oh. on a borrowed time. Oh, nice. But they I keep like that, that under wraps from the, the people that they, that they are uh, living with, like the people that they know in the town. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I like yeah, that. I like that. Reminds me of, uh, what was it, Dead at 21, that MTV show from the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kai, concept. Yeah, so um, unlike all of my other characters, uh, I hope they have magic. Uh, just kidding. 
uh, I was thinking about playing a druidic type character who is probably a little bit more isolated from society than the rest of the characters. Maybe not even just this specific society, but from people in general. A little cottage in the woods by herself, very in tune with nature. Um, and harnessing powers that maybe she doesn't even understand is magic itself, but is just very much someone who is of the earth and harnesses that energy. And Justin, what were you thinking? Okay, I was thinking an elf um, that is kind of, what is it? He wants to be good, so he's kind of the opposite of Chris's character, where he wants to <laughs> he wants to get better and choose to do good and stuff like that, because he's a knight. He's a goody two-shoes type, so it's going to be a, a fun balance with that. Um, yeah, he just hopes to become the, the king's hand at some point or something like that is kind of what I'm thinking directionally. Oh, yeah. Okay. But he's just like a weak, a lowly knight right now. Like, a almost, do you want, are you going to play into it like almost like too goody, too shoe for their own good? Yeah, exactly. Where it can hurt them because they don't play the politics as well and this stuff. He doesn't do the, the evil things. All right, there are, man, okay. Thoughts, stream of thought, consciousness, thoughts, right? Like, honorable is a focus in there, um, but so is naive and foolish. Depends on how you want to play in there, and they have, like, little boxed-in mechanics that can help you out. Um, oh. Ryan, with that terminally ill or and stuff like that, did mm -hmm. you, oh, sorry, I got you right as a bite, mm -hmm. so I'll, nope. I'll be verbose. Um you um did you have any kind of focus or descriptor that informed that comment or, or thought because um, there is the um i think the doomed descriptor <clears throat> that might be good there yeah uh that that was kind of what i was thinking when i was going through okay. the the list and the book um oh yeah but if you have any other thoughts i'm open to those yeah i want to say that there was a focus that was uh similar to that but i can't find it off the top of my head so i'm not gonna think about it too hard um so for races like dwarves and elves and stuff like that you can say like i want to trade my descriptor for a racial trait but generally i don't recommend that i recommend just taking that and just say we'll just say you're a dwarf but there's not like a D, &D like Okay, you're a dwarf. You got to get all the dwarf checky boxes and stuff like that. Um, I recommend sense. not doing that. So, um, sweet. So then we've got Chris, your character. You've got descriptor, type, and focus all figured out. Ryan, we know we wanted to do a doomed speaker. So you might want to start looking through the focuses. And I think that's the last angle you got. Um,. Hi, let's talk about descriptor type focus right there. So you were talking about a kind of druidic style magic user. Um, yeah. Typically when doing spells and stuff like that, making like a wizard or a cleric, you'd use like the focus master's spells. I don't know if that's actually the right call here. Oh, um, interesting. Uh, yeah, I don't know if she would be a master of what she's doing. <laughs> Right, so you've got like Channel Divine Blessing, which is another one that's kind of like that. I don't, even that almost sounds like too intentional, right? Yeah. Uh, so there might be some interesting focuses that we can go into. Let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm scrolling through them. Howls at the Moon is like if for a werewolf character. It lives in the wilderness is outright like that. Mm hmm. Right, let me find that one. But I don't know, that doesn't really do what you want there. There is, in a, another book, I'm going to cheat and go to Numenera. There was, I think it was like Channels the Leviathan. Hmm. Um, and I think that might be a cool thing. I just got to navigate the RPG giant folder to get to it. 
Yeah. I oh, love how wait. one of the focuses is just murders. <laughs> yes. <laughs> one is runs away. Sorry, these are so good. <laughs> Justin, while I'm thinking about that on the back of my head, uh, <clears throat> for descriptor there, we talked about naive and stuff of like that. Did you have a chance to look those over? No, I was looking for those. Um, I'm at fighter stuff and warrior stuff. Like I see warrior backgrounds are and... way further back. So like naive is on page L M N naive page fifty three as the page numbers display. Oh, Brandon, I'm I'm wondering. I found shepherd spirits. Ooh. It says wandering souls, but the nature spirits and elementals part of it. I think makes sense. Yeah, you can use that, and there can definitely be some like Miyazaki style like spirits and shit, right? Mm-hmm. I dig that. Okay. Cool. So we've got you were already th you were definitely thinking add up, and that kind of informed why it wasn't like a ranger or like lumberjack mm -hmm. character. Um, yeah. We just need a descriptor. I bet you can find a descriptor that like will describe some of the like being out in the wilderness and shit like that, like kind of being, I don't know, I don't know, I'll let you, you poke around in those. Ryan, for yes. your descriptor, we got speaker, oh no, and you had, we had doomed, mm -hmm. have you uh, found any developments on the focuses? Yeah, I'm looking now, entertain sticks out to me. Um, but I haven't completed looking through all of them. Roger, roger that. Reading. How many do we need? Just one of each. One descriptor, one type, one focus. Okay. And that's on your character sheet? Ooh. That's at the top. You, in, I mean, the way it works in Cypher system, you are a adjective, noun, who verbs. And you can tell that to another person who knows Cypher and it's like, oh, that sounds like a cool character. Because that's kind of all they need to know. There are some of those descriptors are kind of like, they're bad, right? They're, they're, they are, in that they are bad things for the characters. That could be doomed, but really what sticks out to me is like clumsy, naive, and foolish. Um, mm. Just do some really fun mechanics. Uh, where, like, clumsy has some, has the dumb luck little ability, and I can just get every other GM intrusion I can do against you is free. Um, but fifty percent of the time, it like is ends up being I have to make it beneficial. For you. Um, then so that's foolish. It's just go play. Um, what is a GM intrusion? Yeah, I should talk about that. <laughs> Yeah, While everyone's one. looking at books, I can we I can talk about that. Um, <clears throat> so, Cipher System is a game where you roll d20s to see if you are successful at the thing you're trying to do. You don't roll a whole lot more than d20s. You roll d6s when you're trying to do like your recovery rolls. It's, it's the Cipher equivalent of like a short slash long rest. Um, when you roll a one, that's a GM intrusion. Uh, and also, I can just throw GM intrusions whenever that whenever the heck I want. So um Yeah. They are generally speaking, you ever had like a GM who really liked to like you rolled a one on the die, something bad, extra bad happens. A GM intrusion is the rules solidification of that concept and practice. Um and so it is never the same thing. It's usually something bad. You like you go to attack someone, you roll a one like you drop your weapon or generally what happens is the, the ciphers and aka magic items like potions and scrolls or your class or the background of your character or the background of the story 
kind of build up a armory of intrusion fodder, right? So, so you basically, I try to pull from those and make the make them more interesting. Then, oh, you rolled a one, you drop your sword. Like you, you rolled a one, and you that uh, alchemist fire on your back just explodes right on your back, getting you and everyone near you. That like, um, that's. Okay, that that's an example in my head because I've run this module for the Ravens Realm server before, and uh, it was Will throwing Alchemist Fire, and he he not wanted he not wanted it, um, and ended up catching the whole party on fire. So um, that's why that sticks in my brain. That's not because I'm particularly like, yeah, I'm gonna burn the players in Alchemist Fire. It's just it just literally happened. Um, yeah. And um, um, I have found my foci, focus, is idolized on? by million. Hell yes. Oh, shit. That's awesome. <laughs> I added that all to my character sheet. Is there anything that I need to do to complete it? So the actual steps step for character together. creation, they're they're described in tier one of your type, and we'll kind of we'll get there. I think I just wanted to make sure everyone was on the same phase. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't have all three components? I bet I think we don't have a descriptor for Kai yet, and Justin, I don't remember what all we didn't didn't have for you. All I'm lacking right now is uh, focus, but I'm looking into like a uh, fumbling might because since I'm going with the foolish route for it, so it says like. My character is foolish, is a foolish knight who, and then the focus, I think it might be like, I don't know, kind of drunken master style, perhaps, where he Ooh. like either drinks or he puts on a sash and the way he puts on the sash like changes what he does. But, you know, whenever he levels up, he can figure out, oh, if I tie it around my wrist, it does something X and Y better or something like that. Okay. All right. So it's like a, what? I have is Elf's Fumbling Might for the focus name, but I don't know if that makes sense. It doesn't read right. Who Elf's Fumbling Might? Who has the Elf's Fumbling Might? I don't know. You might try to reskin the Howls at the Moon focus and the Beast form. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Right. Like, it can be a werewolf, it could be, uh, like, a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde situation. Oh, or, or, like, uh... You know, I'm trying to think of... I don't know, people peeing up, like, Mjolnir, or something like that. Okay. So would it be, like, who Moon Howlers might, or who... It doesn't really sound right in the focus. I would say, just, like, um... You can call it whatever the heck we want, right? Like it's, we'll call it like we know it's Howls at the Moon. And you kind of have the B shape type thing, but we can call it like who. I don't know. Wields uncanny strength, right? Okay. That's on, let's see, House of the Moon is on page 69. Got it. Nice. Beast form. Nice. <laughs> I was yeah. waiting for it. I was waiting for it. <laughs> I was going to say, Kai beat me to it. <laughs> Sweet. I think we are generally good to go. Is everyone ready to go to uh, type? description and and we'll kind of work out from there oh i think i got my um thingy descriptor yeah what'd you roll with i think i'm gonna go with inquisitive Heck yeah Ooh. and i think it's like taking inquisitive to the extreme in the sense that she was so she wanted to know every little thing about every little thing around her that she never made out of the forest like something new always came up that she wanted to learn every detail about that she never made it to the village. She had too many other things to be exploring. Yeah, I like that. All right, so 
one of the awesome things is in the Cypher rulebook, you go to, in, in the Foundry table, you can pull up the descriptor itself here. If I do this, does that make that pop up? Yes. And yeah. you can go in there, and if so, if you go to like inquisitive and stuff, you have skill, 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 inability, inability. You can drag those onto your character sheet, and it does all the entry data entry for you. Oh, nice. I shall do that. And I'm showing stream how you can do that. If you just gotta do is drag and yeah. drop. Heck yeah, thank you. Oh. <clears throat> and then do we do that for our other um, things? things Absolutely. Too? Yes, but let's get to focus. Let's do focus after type. Ah. So if you go into type in that little in table book. Um, first tier warrior, first tier adept, etc. will show you everything you've got to do to make your character. So let's talk about the rest of the character and kind of the mechanics of things. In Cypher System, you have three pools. You have your might, your speed, and your intellect. And that's generally like the strength con, uh, the, what is dex, what's the quick, dex curve, I don't know. I don't remember if 5e tries to... What else goes into, like, a dexy save? It's either strength... Con, well, dex and something else, right? No, you just do straight up saves for a dex save or a con save now, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't really roll them together. Um, it used to be fortitude, reflex, and will. That's right. That's what And it got swapped out. Um, anyways, so... Um, everything attacks those three attributes, right? So if you're like trying to push a door open or something like that, that's going to be a might-based role. And I'll explain what what the implication of it being based in might or based in speed does in a second. But, but um, trying to outrun something or evade a trap would be like a speed-based role. Um, and trying to outsmart or convince someone would be an intellect-based role. Um, yeah. So... When you are doing any of these things, you are rolling against a task with a difficulty from one to 10 uh, to get kind of what you've got to roll on that. You multiply the difficulty by three and that's the DC to hit. Um, but you can have various advantages and things like that while you're doing this. And so that could be, um, you have like really nice thieves tools to pick a lock. And that would take like a level four lock down to a level three. Oh, and I've got my buddy who is helping me in some constructive way by like making sure something is a lot, I don't know, right? That sort of thing. That would also bring it down a tier. And so a lot of the tackling of higher tier problems revolves around equipment and narrative positioning and things like that, isn't it? So, yeah. Um, let's see, beyond that, you also have Effort, um, which is a mechanic by which you can spend points from your pool of strength, might, uh, and, or speed, might, and intellect, um, and that will slowly deplete them over time. So having a high might doesn't actually just inherently make you better at like op like pulling doors open or hitting things. Um, what it does is it gives you a gas tank by which you can expend the effort to do those things. Um, what would make you inherently better at doing those things is if you had like a descriptor or some skill training in that thing. That would make you inherently better at attacking or busting down doors or doing puzzles. Hmm. So with that kind of system, well, no, I need, I need to explain effort. Effort is the most complicated aspect of the system. And that is where you spend three points from a pool and you take the level of a challenge down by one level. You can do more than that, but not at level one. And we're level one for basically this whole adventure. So I don't need to explain the more complex parts of that mechanic. So 
We're not gonna. Perfect. Oh. <laughs> so yeah. So if you have like eighteen strength, you can spend you can spend three points from that. Or eighteen might. You can spend three points from might, and that would give you uh, make it easier to hit a dude, or maybe even do extra damage. And we'll get into that because I do have like a little combat demo. So, cool. Let's uh let's start right off the bat. Tier one of your character, or basically if you just read the type, and the first tier blank, as well as the stat pulls, it tells you what to do there. So, um, I'm going to start with the explorer because Chris is the first in my Discord list of folks. So, explorer stat pulls. You see there um, where it says 1099 for your might? Right. So that's your starting point. And everyone's mm -hmm. going to basically, they'll have that table that tells them their starting stats. And then you get six points that you can distribute however the heck you want. Um, your descriptors may have informed some of that too. Um, so you might need to circle back at some point and make sure you aren't missing out. You had the dishonorable, right? Right. So let me go back to Dishonorable. Yeah, so Dishonorable is sneaky. You have plus 40 to your, sneak, to your uh, speed pool right off the bat. Oh, so you'd get that's that. Tr okay. Yeah. It was like updating it in Foundry, but I wasn't sure what was happening. And that's that's why. Okay, that's cool. There is another like Foundry thing I've got where it's like journal entries for... There's... The book I made pop out is the way to do it. There's another way you can drag the descriptor on and it will adjust everything, but it ends up wiping out the character sheet, so don't do that. Use the, All right. Use the book and dra dra drag out the subcomponents. So I'm super fast. Yes. It helps me explore. Exactly. All right. Um, so yeah, you've got your, your stat array for the explorer. Let's go to Justin. You're doing hey. a warrior, right? Correct. All right. Did you see the stat pool section and kind of everything I just talked about? Yes, yeah, I was still working on uh, the focus, but yeah, here. I okay. am going there. No. I'm going to spend my points now. Is that is that cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six go, ahead and, okay. go ahead and All assign right. them. Just to make sure All everyone's right. at that point, because I think once you get past this, it's pretty straightforward. Mm. Let's do... And Kai, did you follow along with all that stat allocation stuff? Yeah, so it's set. So I have seven might, nine speed, 12 intellect. And then Inquisitive says I have a plus four to my intellect pool. So that would be 16 intellect. Okay. Okay. Base before you even assigned your extra points, right? Yeah. Yep. What's the highest it can go? There's no cap. Oh. And I mean, the, from a balance standpoint, there doesn't need to be a cap because it's not the stat being high doesn't automatically add to rolls. It's just the more effort you can use. There was okay. one thing I didn't mention a mechanic. It's called edge. Um, so you will also have an edge for certain stats, and that is essentially a coupon whenever you're trying to do something fancy. So certain abilities you might activate will say like this cost two might to use or this cost three speed or this cost, you know, four intellect to use this power. Um, your edge is a coupon that comes in at the end and, and detracts from that. Also, if you use effort, um, edge would take off of that. You can't really have an edge higher than one to start off with. But if you were to say have an edge of three in something, you could just use effort all the time and Ever have to pay for it. Mm. Um, also, yes, if you have an edge that is higher than the ability cost of a power, like, you can just use that power whenever, as much as you want, without having to pay for it. it. What this looks like at the high end of play is your abilities are always free. It's always about the effort you're throwing behind it. It kind of depletes it, and, and then whatever else happened to be depleting that, whether it's traps or attacks or exhaustion. What does it mean when it says you can bear three ciphers at a time? Okay. So ciphers are the wild card system of the cipher system. 
And the idea is to give incredibly useful and powerful expendable abilities. Um, I'll, I'll just generate one real quick. Do, do, do. Let's say fantasy ciphers. Roll. Instant shelter. And so this would be like, uh, what would this be? Would this be a scroll? Form. And it's definitely it? like an, an improv type of task. So this is a clay rune plate of instant shelter, right? Um, you might have to identify and stuff like that to figure out what it is, but you found some rune slab with like magic shit on it. And this is what it does. And with the addition of water and air, the cipher expands into a simple one room structure with a door and transparent window. The structure is 10 by 10 by 20. Um, is made from a durable non flammable material similar to sandstone. It is permanent and immobile once created, right? And so that's just a scroll that someone could start with. Um, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be rolling everyone's ciphers to get started with. So, okay. and you will be up to your cipher limit. Oh, okay. Everyone else only can hold two. Um, you can hold three because you're an adept. Um, yeah. Usually what it is is it's, uh, I don't know, the 5G and all of the magic items interferes with each other. And it basically gives me a license to use GM intrusions if you hoard them and don't use them. <laughs> and that's a balance. It's The idea is to keep churning and with the basic promise that if you use a thing I will give you another thing it won't be the same thing but you will get more things um, so to try and avoid like I don't want to use the potion I'm dying but I don't want to use this potion because I might need it later syndrome Got it. Uh, these could be these could get stupid powerful like we had level one characters in one of my it was um second darkness it was a pathfinder in which I had, I had converted cipher system in my early thing days of it and one of their starting ciphers was like it was called a reset and it rewinds the last 15 minutes of time right <laughs> so, <laughs> just going out That's the door useful. like did some crazy stuff like cannonballing literally people around town and stuff like that it was interesting <laughs> um like the instant shelter right here like yes it's a thing you can live in but also you know, portable cover and stuff like that. So um, that's kind of the, the, the crux of the cipher system. If I had to put it into a nutshell, it, it like distills like the crazy gonzo hijinks that happens in D&D, even though it's not like in the rule books that like you can do all these crazy combination type thingies. It solidifies those as like, no, that's actually at the point of the game. Um, and that's the ciphers try to highlight that. So you'll get, you know, Cypher A with Cypher B and like, how can I use these two together? Can I use my ability to do that? And what if he's looking the other way while I like all kinds of that crazy D and hijinks. So Um Abilities. Uh ability scores, whatever they're called, your pools. Um Justin, how it goes whatever it was you were working on, because you look intent and in concentration, and I am <laughs> determined to interrupt you. Okay, I am actually working on abilities, so that kind of works out. Hell yeah. Okay, so and you've I've actually done your pools, it. and you've... Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. So, after you've done your pools, Ryan, have you done your pools yet? I have I have done my pools. I have pooled. Hell yeah. I'm in the pool. And then I've <laughs> also done my abilities. Oh, nice. Okay, everyone's just rolling right on. Uh, Kai, how's it going? I haven't done any of that. <laughs> well, no, I haven't done my abilities. Uh, okay. There's a lot of abilities right there. Yeah, I and, have to pick four of them. And if you look at it in the table, they'll have clickable links that you can go to the, the list of abilities it gives you right there. Oh, yeah. In the under first year depth, I just click them, like drag them over. But you can also click go... on them to read them. Oh. Ooh. Chris, how are you doing? Are you at abilities? Yeah, I'm looking at them now. How do I know how many I get? It says in the first tier explorer, special okay. abilities, it says so choose cool. X. Let's see. Or. Think. 
fleet of foot. In danger sense. Oh, you um, put more on this. I guess What's I up, will. Uh, I'll introduce my abilities that I've selected. Hell yeah, I've go. Selected anecdote. Uh, I've selected encouragement. Interaction skills, which got me trained in public speaking and seeing through deception, and okay. understanding, so I can uh, study and observe creatures and or objects to gain assets um, when dealing with them in the next interaction. Uh, encouragement lets me basically inspire my allies uh, to help ease one of the following tasks, defense, attack, or task related to any skill that I am trained in or specialize in. Uh, oh, yeah. Anecdote lets me um, lift the spirit of a group of creatures and help them bond together by entertaining them with an uplifting or pointed anecdote. Um, they, anyone who pays attention for the next hour, um, or for the next hour, anyone who paid attention uh, are trained in a task you choose that's related to the anecdote as long as it's not an attack or defense task. Um, okay. And then uh, it takes a minute to complete, uh, but an action to initiate. And uh, could you go into detail on how skills will help us uh, with our roles? Sure. So you, there's not a skill list. So you will have various things you will become, tr become trained in, like public speaking and talking to people. Um, for skills, basically, it's when you are building, you'll build out a role before you actually let the dice hit the table, um, so to speak. Playing entities. Um, but yeah, so you would say like, okay, I'm going to try and convince him to pay me double what he just said, right? So you'd say, oh, okay, well, that's an intellect-based task. I'm going to put that at like a challenge, like seven. Because that's a tall order. He doesn't have a lot of money, and he thinks he can go get someone else. They would get the job done, probably, right? And you're like, "Well, I'm trained in public speaking." Oh, okay. Uh, so if you're trained in it, it drops it down by one. You can also be specialized in a task where you like mm. turbo focus in it later on, um, and that would drop it down by two. So it drop that seven down to a five. But we're just trained right now, so we'll say six. You'll be like, "Okay," but I also want to put some effort into it because I really want that extra money, and that drops it down to a five. Um, and when you use effort, do you, um, what does that do? You take away three from the stat that you're, pool that you're choosing, associated. pooling, yep. And edge right. is just, you, it's it's as a placeholder for um, something you don't have to lose when you try to expend effort. So for example, I have an edge of one, an intellect. So yeah. when I use effort and intellect, I only take away two. Um, for the first level and then one for the second level and beyond it would actually be the reason i explain it as a coupon is because it's basically you pile it all together mm, so let's say okay. you let's say you could you can't do two levels of efforts with a first tier character but gotcha let's say yeah. you could. Mm -hmm. like that would be five normally your edge of one would bring it to four mm -hmm. it bring it to it wouldn't deduct gotcha. from both things. so it's a coupon per purchase hypothetically Per roll. Per roll. Yeah, per roll. Because let's say you had a mind control ability, right? So mm -hmm. I'm going to use this mind control ability. It's got a cost of three. It's an intellect based roll. And I want to use effort. And it's kind of public speaking. I want to try and use it all together. You can only use that edge for one component of that. It doesn't start from the ability and the effort. So, so I just, just to make that clear there, too. Mm hmm. So we try to control how many dice are thrown. Like a lot of times in D and D, people get real happy and just want to like throw those d twenties. That gets messy in Cipher because if the ones come up, like shit's going down. So we gotta. It's kind of it's similar to like rolling a six or less in um, uh, Powered by the Apocalypse games, like season two was, mm -hmm. um, where like you know you gotta be careful because if you roll bad, like you done bad. <laughs> so. <laughs> That I hope I addressed all those questions. Yeah, you definitely did. Sweet. Just, just, just having a conversation as everyone's wrapping up their characters. Yeah. So on the abilities, I archive all the ones that I'm not using, right? 
Is that how I narrow down? <laughs> I was you trying to 100 percent of the abilities over. It started that way. I think it loaded <laughs> them all. Uh, mm, on I'm... mine because I don't know if it came with because I did the all thing three. I said not to do. Oh, uh, which was <laughs> <laughs> you dragged you drag so in the book book <laughs> that I made open for folks. <laughs> You know this shit. Yeah. Go to your descriptor, and it has the subcomponents in it. So let's say you did dishonorable. You don't yeah. drag dishonorable out. You drag oh. the <laughs> subcomponents because I said there's another thing you can do. Don't do that because it resets your character sheet. I'm looking at your character sheet, and there's. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> Leave it to me. <laughs> yeah. No, you would delete. They shouldn't be there at all. Okay. All right, but you got your abilities on here. Your pools look roughly correct. Well, your speed might be low. Right, because Dishonorable mm -hmm. gave you four speed. Yeah, but it started as nine, four. right? Oh, did it? Did the yeah. four speed start kind of that? Okay. Yeah. All right, then that's what it ought to be there. And then you did fight and intellect to fill in everything else. Okay, that makes a little bit of sense. All right, so you put four into might, and you put two into your intellect, and you left your speed yeah. as is. You got your abilities there. And then you should just, what you need to do is you need to go into your descriptor mm -hmm. in in the book section and drag out those little subcomponents onto your character sheet so you get those skills. Okay. I'm going to look at everyone else's character sheet and see how bad this is. <laughs> Kai's, Kai's going, got it going. Justin also has it going. I'm and copying and pasting. You're not just dragging the things across? No. All right. I mean, On skills, uh, are we trained on all of our skills, or would it be the the first level? Uh, let's see. Uh, you pick specialized, or do we choose? You get the, they'd be trained. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And is three good? I, I have armor proficiency, athleticism, and parry as my three skills. But then my skill is armor proficiency is also similar to my practiced and armor ability. Yeah, I'm trying to look at what you did here. Yeah, so I would say that armor proficiency and parry, those aren't good skills because parry is basically a speed defense. And you can't just pick being trained in speed defense unless you have a power that does it. Okay. Um, one of the rules in there, one of the stipulations there is you can't just pick up a skill trained with, like, to be trained with, like, a sword. Um, you have to have access to the ability trained with weapons. Uh, what do they call it? Actually, they don't call it that. They call it practiced. Practiced with all weapons. Skilled with attack, skilled mm -hmm. with the defense. This is the second tier warrior. Uh, and that's a a coveted ability because it's just a shortcut to getting a, a boon on all your attacks and only warriors really have access to it okay so i could just start off with two skills and then add in more skills whenever we get deeper into the character development or like yeah. like yeah. whenever he levels up or whatever uh let's see do you do you start with skills oh do we Not if... oh i didn't know about that i just looked let's see did I even find that? I was looking at the rule book. Uh, you start with skills from your descriptor. Um, yeah, that's typically how that works. Yeah. And I think certain other ones may. I'm checking the explorer right now. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, so you shouldn't really start with skills okay. that are outside of the descriptor. You will, oh. assemble, you will accrue them over time. Okay, so I shouldn't have anything in skills. In combat, I just I have whatever it left up. And then abilities, I have bash, 
Um, combat prowess, no need for weapons, and practiced in armor. Because it said I needed four. Okay. Sounds good. So um, wait. Yeah. Is your character going to be an unarmed brawler? Yeah, he's kind of a... He's, he's a knight that fights with his fist. Okay. Okay. But it, it, the armor in my head, it's like I have this uh, sash, that's magical sash, and it's a very flexible armor. So, like, he's more kind of, uh, what would it be, monk like, I guess. What descriptor did you go with? Uh, where's a magical sash? Let me see. Da, 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 no. no, that's focus. Uh, I went foolish. Foolish. So, let me go into foolish on the character sheet. On the books, I should say. And do, 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 foolish. Yeah, you get carefree, intellect weakness. Uh, here, I'm just gonna drag these onto your sheet. Do do do. If you check your skills tab now, I see it. See. I like it. Dumb luck. Hmm. <laughs> intellect defense. Carefree, you succeed. Carefree, intellect weakness. Anytime you spend points from your intellect pool, you spend one more than usual. It's like an anti edge. <laughs> and then you are hindered in intellect defense and seen through trickery. What about trickery? Uh, it, any task that involves seeing through deception, illusion, or traps is hindered before you. So oh. it's, like, it's like a level three. Like kid trying to lie to get money out of you, it's level four for you. Like you were naive. So I'm a big old dum dum. <laughs> it just has good luck and very strong. Yeah. yeah. This is the strongest character I've ever made. <laughs> Even more than Chat Squatch, probably. All right. <laughs> so we've got your stuff there. I think the, bit, the last things there are going to be around. Um, and ciphers. Make sure everyone's got their edges marked. So edge is also in that first tier. Um, I can see you can see it's right under effort typically, where it says what your edge settings should be. I think. Yeah. So Justin, you get to pick. You can either have a might of one, speed of zero, or a might of zero and a speed of one. For your edge, it sounds like you're going to be a might edge one. Yeah. Uh, kind of warrior. I think one of them ends up having a slightly more interesting edge uh, layout at the first level, I thought. So I'll do edge one on might and then. Leave it. Leave okay. the rest. Be right back. Give me a sec. Yep, yep, yep. Kai, I haven't heard Why from you in a while. Let's... Oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, I was. Should I be dragging my first tier one for Shepherd Spirits onto my character sheet too? Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, I was okay. gonna say. After everyone's kind of gotten through that, we'll do your focus abilities. And when it says two intel intellect points next to it, is that like with every time we do that, we're decreasing the pool by that amount? That's exactly right. Well, rather, that is its point cost. So Question the Spirits has a point cost of two. Oh, that's even what it calls it, point cost, two. Um, if you have an edge of intellect in your intellect of one, then mm -hmm. it, it's a point cost of one to use that ability. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I chose going to take... Doing the abilities took me a while because I was like... There's a lot of cool shit that I could do, but it's very unrealistic for what I said this character was. <laughs> so she has no offensive magic at all. Um, and it's kind of just like inquisitive things that she would be doing. Okay. Hell yeah. So, Which is why I took hedge magic instead of shatter. <laughs> I, hedge magic is so fun. That's what I, but that's what I imagine her, like, I imagine her being a hedge mage. Where she's like, yeah. ooh, I'm floating little rocks in my hand. Like, that's how I feel that this character, like... And that character can use that ability for free. free. You can just use that Oh, yeah, because it's, because it's one intellect point, so it'd be zero. Yes. Justin, make sure yes. you go to the um, House of the Moon and grab that ability 
uh, change beast shape or whatever it was called. Beast yeah. Change. And make sure that's on your character sheet. I okay. don't know if you, you had I don't see yet. it. I don't see it. So, how is that the moon? I'll just do it real quick since you are copy and paste and I can save you time. Beast Ooh. form. Dragging that onto your character sheet. Beast form is right there. Sweet. I'll rescan it. Yeah, because we are very much changing the mechanics there. So let's look, but let's give it like the same kind of time boxed situation where you can use it for basically like a week, a month, or something like that. So it's only got a certain amount of juice. Okay. Cool. Ryan, how's it oh. going for all your junk? Great. Um, equipment <clears throat> did that. Um, so all good there. You had your abilities already lined out too. You, you were actually the first one to say your stuff was all good. So, Chris, I think I'm good to go. how's it going with you? Looking at equipment right now, trying to oh figure out what I want to do there. I have appropriate yeah. clothing and weapon of my choice. Plus two expensive items, two moderately priced items, and up to four inexp inexpensive items. Trying to... If you go to the fantasy in the book, uh -huh. fantasy setting, uh, you'll see a list of items. Uh, oh. That's what you can select from. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. Sweet. I will I will hit the button to make things pop up. Oh. Button to make things... Oh, yeah. I it probably changed your page because oh, you, you were actually looking at it. Sorry. But yeah, it's easy enough to get back into. So under medieval fantasy equipment? Yep. It puts it in the GP cost. My, my intention with Stars Without Number is to basically, whenever we get to the sci-fi game that we'll be doing, I just want to use the economy and items from Stars Without Number wholesale. And that's kind of what I do, like, is in when I'm doing this Generally, I, I I ran all of my stuff before this fantasy rulebook was written, so I just kind of like, oh yeah, we'll just use the items and economy from D and D. the The main difference is that certain. Well, I'm gonna just rant about different types of RPGs and how economies are strange, because in D and D, or at least in Pathfinder First Edition, uh, gold was a balance concern, where if you gave your players too much gold, like gold is power directly transferable in cypher not so much and, and definitely in like a lot of the without numbers kevin crawford like stars without number worlds without number uh giving people too much money isn't necessarily a balance concern um so but in in D, &D it's very much a balance concern uh i tend to have favored cypher which also makes money not really a balance concern because you can't really buy cyphers and stuff like that or you can't buy powerful cyphers I think after this, everyone's going to be good to go. I think we should do some art. Or what? Oh, okay, we're only an hour into the session tonight, so. Yeah, Not yeah, bad. Bro. Okay, Brandon, so when it says two expensive items, two motor items, four inexpensive items. What is, like, I'm reading the price categories thing, but like, which is which? Like, what is the line of how many gold pieces is expensive versus inexpensive? I'm looking at it too. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Like, if you find an item that's in between, I guess round up, if you can find two expensive items that you want, then we can have that conversation, but like, I don't know, just keep it in theme for the character. I don't really give a shit. <laughs> okay. And that would be including weapons and stuff, like that's included in that yes. number. Yeah, if your character, because I don't think the add-up comes with weapons, where like the warrior No, does. it does not. But I'm trained in, no, I'm practiced in light weaponry. Oh, and there's a terminology there. You have um, inability or untrained, you have practiced, 
you have trained, and then you have uh, specialized, right? So that practice with weapons is because if you aren't practiced with weapons, you actually go into the combats and fights with a uh, penalty. So, yeah. Uh, just just food for thought. Uh, well, we'll get into a combat simulation here in a second. I'm actually making sure everyone's tokens are all configured. I click to make sure I do that. Like, I don't do this a hundred times every time I do a Ravens Marches game. Okay, I'm gonna set up here. Can I have a dog? <laughs> Yes. You, I mean, <laughs> I mean that, that's me saying it, but <laughs> that can be one of your equipment items for sure. Okay, I didn't know if that was like not allowed. It, it's completely oh. allowed. Warhorse. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I almost chose a pony, but I think that would be really useless. <laughs> you carry stuff. No, no ponies. They like couldn't walk through the woods. A pony in the woods makes no sense. <laughs> break its leg immediately. Guard dog seems very useful. Yeah. Give it myself like the standard explorer kit as best I can remember it. Oh boy. <laughs> and set up a little demo. Hopefully it's a little familiar. The uh, arena since the days of season one has uh, seen better days. It's uh, <laughs> flooded in the corner and uh, no one's been around to mop up all the blood anymore. So. Yeah. Gross. So I've got a hill giant off to the side. Got it leveled up. Pause. Can you all move y'all's tokens? Yep. Hell yeah. All right. Well, everyone was on equipment, so we're probably about ready to start the combat little tutorial. And uh, we'll... y'all think we should do character art? Uh, session right after the combat tutorial, or do you think we should kind of do that between episodes? Which, what's the vibe here? I think between episodes, so we can kind of have the build oh. set up and then work on that. All right, I agree. To me. Then I'm going to go refill my water bottle. We'll come back to a combat tutorial, and we'll get the adventure started. Hopefully, not far after eight, eight o'clock my time. All right. Sounds good. Should I put the be right back screen on, or Are we good? Yeah, let's okay. take five. Right. We'll be right back screen.
Hey, welcome hey, back. Oh, sorry. You got it. Uh, mm -hmm. Hey, welcome back. We are back from our quick little bio break. And Brandon, take it away. Here you go. We are back. We've got everyone back at the old arena. Um, and Justin made the comment that uh, having just the plain tokens as like a soft art wasn't good enough. So we're going to <laughs> Tomb and Tuesday and hitting them up for some uh, character tokens. Oh, that actually came out perfect for Rise of Richter. Yeah, it looked good so far. Yeah, so shout out to twominutetabletop.com. They have all kinds of like tokens and all kinds of easy stuff to get to pretty quickly for these kind of campaigns. I used pretty Is much that exclusively. For... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I saw that Ryan's character is a bard, but uh, doesn't really play inst an instrument, or I didn't hear an instrument, and it was a really good talker <laughs> side of bard, right? Like, poet yeah. side? More so, yeah, more so a, a public speaker, negotiator, yeah, okay. type. Okay. Yeah, that so I didn't really perfect. know. It didn't look like a bard, but I didn't, There, all the bards were like, they were holding lutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, understandable. Thank you for getting that, Justin. Mm -hmm. Got a beast to fight. Looks like Chad Squatch, <laughs> but on droids. Like Chad Squatch's, maybe like uncle or something. Wait, that could be his uh, older brother that we talked about, but never really saw. <laughs> mm -hmm. He just lost all of his hair right. from all the roid usage. <laughs> oh my god. That's a really <laughs> horrible thought. <laughs> A hairless Chad Squatch. <laughs> <laughs> On roids. Alright. So. <laughs> let's start off with just kind of the way like combat flows here. You still have an initiative roll. I'm going to right click and bring out the combat tracker. Now to add everyone to it. We're going to start combat. So, everyone has a d20 under their token icon in the combat tracker. Go ahead and click that thing to get your initiative out there. Hell yeah. Oh, it was almost a 20. Oh, nice. Shit. Yeah, six. <laughs> Mine got hit to a oh. 14. Does that count? <laughs> oh, my, but I don't see the thing under the combat tracker. So do you see Justin in the combat tracker? God. <laughs> yeah, that's a mad <laughs> Well, I have a question. <laughs> Classic. What? So I saw cursed. that, I was like, what's going on? I, it also says I have an inability in initiative. Does that make it worse? Yes. <laughs> Does that mean a it's zero? Or do I roll, one. like, again and get the... I can't no. get lower than a one, but... No, you just got a G of intrusion. Oh, fuck. Lovely. <laughs> Wait, so inability means that a dream intrusion always happens, occurs, no matter what you roll. Yeah. But if a D20 if... is being rolled and there's a 1, it's a GM intrusion. Yeah, but for inability, what does that mean? Uh, It just means, like, inability is... So, okay, what y'all just rolled was against the Giant's level. Giant's level 5, so DC 15 to do the various things. Right? No, so no, in order to go before it in initiative, you would have had to have made a 15. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, so if I, I rolled a 15, would it have been a 14? Uh, it actually... Hmm. In order... For Kai, it, it is actually you had to have rolled at 18 or better. Because it's three per... Way to think of it. Yeah. Yeah. Three per level. And so Kai would have had to oh. be the level six, which is six times three. Right? 18. 18. Yes, that's exactly it. Yep. So that's the way to think of it. It's level 5 for everyone, except for Kai, who is a level 6. <laughs> Sorry, so, I didn't mean to laugh. So, so a 1 didn't beat it, is what you're no. saying. <laughs> <laughs> Turbo failed. 
Um, Turbo failed. I'm so I don't do this a lot. I had, uh, I had like a really good run in the last two things that we did, and <laughs> now I'm just gonna turbo suck. <laughs> like all of this, I just know it. Every yeah, time I'm like, oh yeah, we're doing a season. All of the dice hate me. <laughs> so. Let's go straight into it. Like, y'all are dropped into this arena. I don't know. It's some kind of cosmic thing. You have no idea where the fuck you are. And um, as you're dropped in, Kai, you just fall flat on your butt in this, like, old but still kind of gelatinous, viscous blood that y'all landed in. Everyone else is good to go. But definitely <laughs> surprised by being dropped in a coliseum with a giant who's immediately looking over, looking extremely hungry. And he's going to move over. And em oh, that's a little too far. That's uh, it's off center. And it's gonna just take a swipe at Chris. Chris, he's gonna try and pick you up. Oh, dwarf sandwich time! Right? <laughs> he just tries to grab you. Um, what are you doing? I'm gonna try to wriggle free. Well, he hasn't grabbed you yet, so you're gonna try and uh -huh. uh, evade that. Just give me a yes. speed defense. Yes. I'll try to dodge. All right. B, so just it's roll it. D20. Yes, uh, unless you are skilled in speed defense rolls, at which point you would probably yeah. roll that. Um, actually, let's let's rewind that real quick. Um, in your character sheet, yeah, speed speed straight up would probably be the thing. You do have light armor, so that's good to note. And you have practice with all weapons. You don't have trained without armor. That's was someone else. So yeah, hey. go ahead and, and do another um, do another speed straight up roll. All right, can do. Got an eight. Did you succeed last time? And I just wiped away that success. <laughs> uh, you rolled a fifteen. What last was the time. difficulty? I was difficulty yeah. two. Uh, it was difficulty five. So no, you right. didn't. So he okay. grabs you, and so he walks over and just picks you up. <laughs> And you start shaking you to like get you to stop moving. You're gonna immediately take five points of damage. Oh shit! Okay. But you do have that leather jerkin on, so that helps with uh, that. So that decreases that by one. So you only take four points of damage. That's gonna hit your might pull. Oh, I see. Okay. For four. For four. Okay. It's your turn. What are you doing? Um, I'm. Sh now I'm going to try to wriggle free. Um, now, since we all got after him, could we take our turns in any order? Or do we follow the initiative track? I could be thinking uh, of a different system, and that's why. Because I, I, I've done a lot of research. So I, tend to, I tend to bust it out once. It basically goes good guys, bad guys, good guys, bad guys. It's mm -hmm. effectively what it is. So y'all can act out of order. If okay. Uh... I'll, uh, if I can, I would like to attempt to help Chris to give him, um, to ease one of the, his, the tasks that he's about to, to undertake. If you're okay, okay with okay. that, Chris, with my action. Sure, of course. Yeah, I'm going to kind of run back and say, oh, uh, you there, friend, uh, use the blood to wiggle your way free. And I'm going to encourage <laughs> you with my, use one <laughs> intellect point and encourage you, giving you ease on I, I assume this is going to be a defensive task is that is that correct what he's about uh, to do or is it offensive you're giving him you're giving him encouragement on breaking free right yes we don't yes. we don't have to get turbo like specific. okay cool yeah uh, uh yeah yes you use the blood it it'll it, it lubricates his hands oh, I see. defense yeah. task attack has or yeah. a task that you are specialized oh uh, yes. so that's a problem okay so is it He's not doing either of those. Okay, never mind. Um, Sorry, did um, you say that he picked me up and slammed me down, or he still has me? I he's got you. He's ready. Okay. He's gonna take a bite right. out of okay. you, dude. Okay. Um, so honestly, I think I think defense task is a good one. Okay. I'll let you. I'll let that work. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I'll I'll encourage him uh, on this defense <laughs> task, and I use an intellect point for that. But I do have an edge of one. Do I get to use it for free, or do I subtract one it's, from my intellect? Use so. The ability is encouragement. It's one intellect yes. point, yes. and the edge is one. You subtract nothing. You're, that's a yeah. freebie. You can okay. do that. I, I, I do that. Sweet. 
All right. So, Chris, you can be up. Does anyone else have something they want to do before uh, Chris avoids being uh, Dwarf Drawbreaker? Uh, I got a nat one, so I don't know if I'm allowed oh. to go Yeah, no. This. Everyone that's not Kai, so just Josh. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And I just think I'm going to let him, because I'm going to bash him after he gets dropped or whatnot, or if he tries to wiggle out. I don't really have anything to help him. All right, Chris. Take it away. Level four okay. difficulty to break free here. Might based. Might want to throw some effort on it. How do I do that? So, uh... Might to do expend effort, you're going to take three points from the pool. It is a might based roll, so it's three points from your might pool, but you got that edge of one, so it's actually only two. Okay, so I take that down at eight and then I roll. So, well, oh, shit. don't don't just click buttons yet. So, once <laughs> once once the rolls start getting complicated, like you got might effort and shit flying around, mm -hmm. you actually want to hold alt when you click on the dice button, you're going to get this little dialogue. You can say base difficulty is five. It's a might pool, and you are doing effort to ease one level, and if you're not doing efforts there, you got asset one coming from Ryan. Ooh. Then you can hit roll. Okay, there we go. I got it. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Six Hell yeah! Nice. So you you manage to bust out, land on your feet. Let me give you an extra action out of that because you got that minor effect there. What do you do mm. now? I'm going to try to hit the hill giant with my cutlass. Oh, but before yeah. that, I'm going to say I'm feeling lubricated. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'll say great job there, friend. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So, um,. Yeah, you've got the... It looks like you've already set up your combat tab with the mm. rapier. I think you can hit the... Make sure you target the dude. I think it it might have some level of automation. So target the dude and then hit the die by the by your weapon attack. Target the... Uh, Giant in the... Clicking in the center of him and then clicking the target icon in the bottom of the dial. Hmm. I'm not seeing anything Stop. pop up when I try. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you I, I can't see... right. You literally can't right click on him. Uh, exactly. Oh, oh wait, no, oh. you can, you can, you can, and then it like does like oh, the little triangle. Oh, I see. Thing. The, yeah, the little yeah. yellow triangles in all yep. corners. Target his ass. Yeah, uh, right click him, right -click. and then yeah, right click. I think you can also double click, but. Uh... Oh, there we go. Oh, the double click did it. Okay. Yeah, and I see people have him targeted. Cool. And then hit that little die thing to make it do the thing. On the initiative, or uh, under my character sheet. On your combat tab for the mm -hmm. rapier, you got a die icon. Yeah. You can just you can just click that, or you can alt click if you want to throw some effort in. Okay. She didn't need any of that. That needs a difficulty six. So you Sweet. hit him. So you're gonna deal your damage of two to the hill giant. Nice. And okay, I see as how he that works. starts having like a slight little cut on his leg. Boom, done. All right, Justin, what's going on? Okay, so um, uh, the character I'm calling Loandril tonight is going to go charging this uh, monster. Uh, yep. He's doing a bash, so uh, it costs one might point, but this pummeling melee attack, your attack inflicts one less point of damage than normal, but dazes your target for one round. Okay. During which time all tasks it performs are hindered. And then, so do I click on the pay pull points and then alt click it? The little coins or hamburgers? <laughs> they kind of look yes. like hamburgers. <laughs> yeah, they look like hamburgers. Yeah, pay, pay your hamburger pay tax. <laughs> <laughs> so on there, what do I need to do? I Do I do the alt thing like he did or do I just click it? You're not putting any extra effort into it or anything like that, right? This is all nah. just the straight up normal stuff, right? Exactly. What was the name of the ability? I'm, I'm Bash. Going to Bash. So, oh, yes. Okay. So this one is targeting someone. So you will end up needing to do that. So go ahead and move your character forward. And then make sure they got them targeted. I don't think the targeting did anything, by the way. So I don't, we don't even have to worry about it. Okay. But, um, yeah. So in this case, your ability is also an attack. 
So you're going to alt click on the hamburgers to calculate your annual burger tax. Base difficulty 5. You don't actually have to do the base difficulty, you just can. Um, okay. And then, what did we say? We said uh, pool is still might, skill level is practice. Do you want to use any effort on top of activating the ability? Um, no, not the. Well, yeah, I might as well. I'll try it. You might as well. So, effort to ease task, one level? Yep, That's one level. And then you hit that roll. Rolled it. 19, almost got a one. Sweet. <laughs> that was really close to a one. <laughs> yeah, so attacks actually do extra damage on an 18, 19, or 20. Um, in a 19, you're going to do two extra damage. Ooh. So, uh, Bash is already doing some extra damage. This is a pummel your fist and flex. Wow. One less point damage than normal, but dazes your target. Mm. Uh, during the time, all tasks it performs are hindered. Okay, so so Bash is... So you're normally, your punches deal how much? You are skilled with... It's considered a medium weapon. So, so it does three four damage normally. Four. Oh. Two, four, Ooh. six. Yeah, my fists are medium weapons now. So they would done, So when you normally Bash, you do three... <laughs> And then you got your extra two damage from the fact that you rolled a 19. So that's five damage you've dealt here and kind of dazed. So you just kind of like, what's, what's a good... I concussed him a little. Yeah. I give him a good old, uh, just a double like hammer punch going downward on his head. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I'll mark that damage off. Nice. Boom. And he just socked him. So he is not in a good place right now. I think... Uh, Kai, you are able to stand up. I think that's all. That's all you're allowed to do. <laughs> you choose to do that. <laughs> Just roll away. Um, do I choose to stand up? Is a question. Uh, <laughs> can I like wriggle away? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I have seven hey. mites. So I'm gonna fucking die. Um, you know what? <laughs> This doesn't say I need to be standing. Can I use fast step to just get the fuck away? Yes, <laughs> yes, you can. Okay, I'm gonna use that. <laughs> how do I crawl. like? How do I do that? On the like, how do I make that show up? It says you leap through the air and then some distance away. You can jump up, down, or across anywhere you choose within long range. If you have a clear and unobstructed path to that location. Yeah, I would just say you do it. Um, I'm looking at it right now. Looks good. And then I mark just off that. one point. Done. And move yourself accordingly. Also, the drag ruler is color coded to show you mm. immediate, short, long, extra long, whenever you, you ever get to that sort of thing. That's so. cool. Nice. Anyways, Giant's turn. Oh, he's like humbling around because he's he's just got hit real bad. Um. He's going to take a swing at Justin now and just try and bring his fist down over the top of Justin. Oh, shit. You got to give me a speed defense roll. Okay. Uh, it's level four because of the hindrance. So you, actually, you just... Let's do skills. <laughs> yeah, you're just going to roll... Give me a speed defense roll. Where do I get speed defense roll? Um, I only say speed defense roll because sometimes people are trained in it. Um, if you oh. are not trained in speed defense, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Okay. So, so, what would I do in that situation? You just roll speed. Just roll a d20 off the of speed. If you want to play it, if you want to apply effort, I'll click on it. Up oh, a little late, <laughs> but I rolled a 14. Yeah, which beats difficulty four. So you manage to step out of the way. He doesn't hit you because of that bash attack. He's dazed. I dodge. Yeah, it looks like you can't touch me. <laughs> Um. Hmm. Oh, real quick, can I? I would like to target Chris with some encouragement. I'll say, oh. "Great job make, breaking free! <laughs> now end his life. He tried to kill you and eat you as a snack. <laughs> Show him All that right, you friend, are better." All right. All right. Thanks, friend. And this isn't just Chris. This is everyone. Your allies within oh. short range. Oh. Everyone. Wow, that's really good. 
Thank yeah, you for good... catching. <laughs> no sweat. <laughs> I'll say everyone, so, let's end him. He's on his last legs. You cut his even, you cut his Achilles heel. Even though you were speaking to him, I totally feel mm. inspired as well. <laughs> uh, I'm covered so, in blood, help me. <laughs> inspired. <laughs> I've inspired oh. you to fight that blood off of you. So, uh, Chris, you might want to apply effort to an attack with that cutlass, um, but but use that to deal extra damage. So, um, whenever you're making a weapon attack or a damaging attack, instead of making the task easier, you can actually say, I want to use effort for damage, and that's going to give you three extra damage. Oh. Okay. And, and you can do that yep. multiple times if you got high effort, and you can see how this kind of scales up a high level play. You want to lay it into him. Yeah. Okay, well, that's cool. Um, and it, light weapons are speed or might for the pool. So you might uh, want to not hold from your might. Since that's kind of your first HP, um, mm -hmm. you might you might not want to use might. <laughs> Do speed again? Yeah. What's the base difficulty? Five. Uh, five. Five, okay. He's, you got an asset from Ryan. And, yeah. and he's dazed. So that's actually two. I believe Bash would even affect that. Hold on. Yeah. And I can yeah. expend some effort as well. You can to bring it down um, further, but you can only choose. You've only got one level of effort to spend because you're a, a, a new character. Mm -hmm. So you got to choose whether you want damage or you want the task to be. Easier. I'll put on the damage. All right. Come on. Oh. 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 Bitch. oh. Damn it. Dang. All that. All that math and uh, <laughs> swinging a miss as, as you fly, as your cutlass flies loose and he kind of like starts to, looking like he's kind of shrugging off the bash, but not quite yet because he still has it for Justin's turn. Hell yeah! But it's my turn now, yeah. or is uh, you done? Uh, Kai, are you? How are you choosing to wallow? Uh, can I do something? Yes. Because it just might help the group. Uh, not that it, I'm really doing much. Uh, can I try and throw a net at him? I have yes. a combat net. Uh, yes. <laughs> Is I'm, oh, Am I man. still in short range or do I need to move? You are uh, uh, long range right now. You do need to move. Okay. Okay, so can I move in? What is movement like in this? You can move a short distance and take a normal action. What is short, short distance? Is distance? Is where it's green. It's two, I think. Mine right? is green everywhere. Um, you have a get rid of the measuring stick and go to your character drag. I don't know what that is. So if you just so, like hold on to your character and drag it, uh, oh, it'll be a first color, ahead. second color, and then like a well, third I, color. Like I can't click. Oh, I see. Yeah. And basically the first okay, color. Okay, so is where short. it's green still. Yes. For me, it's purple. I don't know why. How far <laughs> did how far did far step let you move? It just said long distance. Long distance. Long so that, that that tracks. So then from here, that would actually be within short. So if you just there, you're good. Yep. Okay. Pair it up. Okay. Throwing net. So I click the die. I don't have any. I'm not adding anything to it. Am I? Unless you want to, so it's, it'd be a speed-based check. Do you want to use mm -hmm. speed? Do you want to use effort from your speed pool? Sure, I'll use like one. Okay. Yeah. So, so then you're gonna alt-click on the die for speed, or just do oh, that. No. What just happened? We already, we talked through it all. Um, no, I just alt-clicked and it did that. I don't know. Oh, that's interesting. Well, yeah. it, that should have been beats difficulty four. Because you would have used effort. Make sure to mark your speed pool down by three. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's still suffering from the bash, so that hits. So you've got you've managed to land this net on this dude, and he's just he's further continues to be hindered. Okay, uh, if you hit an opponent with a net, all of their physical actions are hindered until they take an action to remove it. Yeah. Justin, I think you've also got a, a thing to do now. Because yeah. we haven't gotten to you yet. Okay. Um, 
I would just like to kind of give him a one-handed uppercut. It's it's just an attack. But I get to use my combat prowess, which adds one damage to any weapon attack of your choice, melee attacks or ranged weapons. Ooh. Oh, but that's damage, so that doesn't help anything on the roll. All right, Justin, I'm going to offer you a GM intrusion. Okay. That's how this no, that's how this is how non rolling ones on dice GM intrusions work as I offer. <laughs> I, I say, hey, I'm going to do a GM intrusion. So do from what I was reading, I could use an XP point and say no or totally reject it, right? But I don't have XP right, right now. But if Correct. I did. Yes. Okay. I, I what is you the don't. do I have to know it or do I say accept or You don't get to know it ahead of time. Okay, I'll accept it. And so, as you start to wind up this uppercut and go for it, you bust your ass. You you just slip in the viscous blood that Kai initially slipped in, and you just fall down and get it all over that beautiful paladin-like armor you've got. Oh, other people's blood. My least favorite thing. <laughs> but you get an XP. And he gets to give one. It, and you get to give one. And everyone is a valid target except for Chris. I'm going to give it to Kai because it's her blood that helped me. <laughs> Why? Except for me. Dishonorable? <laughs> oh. Uh, just just desserts. Wait, okay, so you can't you can't receive, Chris? If it isn't the consequence of my own decisions. And then I can't I can't take. <laughs> That's so funny. That's funny. I I have doom That's so hilarious. I can't I can't get it if he intrudes. <laughs> and I but I can give it and you can't take. But you can you can give it, or you can uh, get it. He, I don't know. He, he, I, I he can't can get them. Money. So yeah. you can get them. Okay. I and I will be the ones receiving all extra XP. <laughs> I can I can give you all XP. I just can't I can't uh, receive it based on my actions. That's it's like the complete funny. opposite of Chris's. So I can give it to Kai. That's the only one I can give my yes. extra XP. Or me. Or me. Yeah, this one's not a consequence of your actions, Wait, I could right? give it to you. That's yeah. right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just can't give it to Chris. Yeah, it's okay. like blood. It's like blood. You know, O blood, A, A B blood, like who we can give, receive. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> so you're like this typo like, negative, we'll Chris. Yeah. Yeah. A, B. A, B, yeah. He can't receive, but he can give. <laughs> that's right. And this, the giant's turn. He's going to go and stomp on Justin. Um, he is covered in that net though, and it is tearing him up. But he is no longer stunned by like the days, so he's only hindered by one. Justin, however, yeah. is prone on the ground. Um, so I'm gonna say that that kind of cancels it out. So Justin, you need to make a speed defense roll, difficulty five. Um, Oops, I didn't put difficulty. Oh. Nice. It's fine. You, you beat you it. Did it. I yeah. done did it. You, you, you managed to roll nice. around in that gross ass floor of the arena that's been neglected since season one and uh, uh not get stomped on by the giant like cracks the ground underneath it chris you're up or party's right. up um i'm gonna say seems like a strange time to surf the net um, <laughs> <laughs> and then i'm <laughs> thank you i'm going to hit him with my Sword, I'm going to try again for that extra damage. Cool, and you've got an asset from Kai's net. Perfect. I'm going to pull from my speed again. Okay. Okay. That should be everything. Oh, oh my god. No. Oh no! Oh, not a natural man. one! <laughs> Dice oh, press behaving. Oh no! <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. At least we're getting him out of the way before the real thing. We're getting him out of the way before the real thing. <laughs> That's uh, so you roll. So Justin rolls <laughs> off to the side to get out of the way. And you you step kind of right in there, but you don't realize that the giant has like cracked the floor quite as much as he has. And you kind of just stumble in between his big Ninja Turtle toes. Right? <laughs> And he just like grabs you by them and it's like, oh, and he's got you grabbed again. Oh, perfect. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the party, the non Chris party members. 
Which is who? Is that all of y'all? <laughs> Wait, slow down. Explain that again. <laughs> uh, Justin? Um, Ryan? Ryan, you probably have some words of encouragement here. Yeah, uh, I'm going to encourage, I'll say, uh, oh no, don't get grabbed by him again. No, you have to avoid getting a attacked and hit and grabbed, okay? Run away oh. from him when he tries to hit you. I'll, everyone run away if he tries to hit or grab you. And then I'm going to encourage everyone for defensive, defensive okay. Uh, tasks. Okay, maneuvers. useful. Thank you. Don't get so eaten! Useful. Don't get eaten! <laughs> so useful. <laughs> Blood take me! Remember! Lubricate! Okay, um... So he's... Is he on... No, whatever, the... Pirates... Is he on the pirate right now? Yes! Yeah, oh yeah, the pirate also Stephen is, is like... Right here. Okay. I would like... Our, I'd like to do another bash, but try to knock him off of him, if that's allowed, instead of, uh, yeah. We're getting some advanced mechanics here, but it's called trading damage for effect. So you subtract okay. three from your damage, and basically try and do that thing. So, okay. you gotta do at least three damage. It's gotta do three damage that bypasses armor, too. But I haven't been, he's not wearing armor, so it's not a big deal. So I lose three might? Well... So your bash already takes one off, so and you deal four damage. So you have if you do zero damage, the effect doesn't happen. So you have to do effort for damage. Okay, effort for damage. So effort for to ease task, right? No, nope. uh, to oh. to add more damage. Second section. Oh, I see. And so one level. Yep. Okay. And then um. I also have Carefree, which says every time you roll for a task, does this count as a task? Roll twice and take the higher result. So good. Yeah, and it says that the task is unmodified, so it is treating it like a cast or a task on the all-in-one roll. And it's because of how bad the rest of that is. Yes, yeah, <laughs> you do. You do get to do that. Is there an? Is there like a? Roll twice, keep higher type of thing in There's there. Additional modifier, bonus, or or bonus, bonus or penalty to roll or a pull point cost. I don't see anything about a. No, just hit roll. Okay. Did that close the dialogue when you hit roll? It did. Okay. Uh, roll a d20 again, and let's just see if you can beat difficulty four. Okay. That so minus four. Good. Whoa, things just got crazy. Hang on. <laughs> Actually, that first one did it, didn't it? Because uh, Kai's net uh, took him down to a level four. Oh, no, you did your effort to damage. So you had to roll a 12 or better. And I rolled a 13 on the second die. That's right. So you got it. So it hit. Ooh. So you did three points of damage, and he's bashed, and Chris is free. Damn. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, I kind of imagine that he's on Chris and he kind of does a uh, the double barrel monkey punch again from above and just kind of like whacks him on top of his head to kind of knock. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Nice. It sucks to get hit in the back of the head. Oh. <laughs> or on he the is top not back. looking good, too. Uh, Kyle, you got anything? Uh, sure. She's going to pull out a sling. <laughs> <laughs> Try and smack him with a stone. Okay. Get it. Can just I just roll a... this flat? I don't want to yeah, add just... anything to it. Yeah, just just roll it flat. Well, it hits speed, so it does like the little chart. That hits him. How much damage does your sling do? Two. Two damage? He is. He's at three HP at this point, so <laughs> y'all are killing oh, it. Oh, I thought we were David and Goliath. Yeah. <laughs> he is. He is on the cusp and like a little dizzy and he's like, stupid. Punch man. Right. <laughs> and he's just going to try and just like do the do the Hulk style like clap attack. Um at hey. Justin. And Justin, you have a an ease for my defensive task encouragement. Ooh. And from your own bash. And yeah. from your own bash. Double ease. So, so base, no no mods, you just have to roll what a 
nine or higher. Nine or higher, yeah. Just uh. Good effort to do it if you want. One d twenty. Yep. Well, you hit you hit the speed die. Okay. And if you wanted to, you could apply effort to it. Oh, nice. okay. That's, I got his hand. Gold. Yeah. Sweet. That's what you needed. Yeah. So Ooh. he goes, Ooh. and you just pop out of the way, and it's shit, and he kind of stumbles. All right, Chris, Justin, Brian, Kai. It's a great movement there, Paladin. You did, you did great. <laughs> That's you exactly the, uh... what I encourage you to do. <laughs> Offensive encouragement here, Ryan. Uh, no, I'm actually going to run up even closer, get enough range oh. with my dagger and say, seeing that he's weak and say, Don't worry, I can stab too! And I'm going to raise my dagger, jump up, try to stab him. Oh um, yeah. So it's going to be a speed roll or I roll the I roll the combat weapon? Attack. That's speed roll. Speed uh, roll? The combat weapon is just a chance for you to like pre, like, Enter mm. all of the information you might have, but it's just a base ass dagger. So okay. just make it a speed roll. Do you want to do effort to damage or hit? Uh, yeah, we'll do effort. Ooh, I need I need a fifteen or better, right, to hit? Or wait, mm -hmm. no, a twelve or better because he's twelve or better. Yeah. Okay. Actually, you know, I'll do the extra actually, damage. Actually, and he's never taken Kai's net off either. Yeah. <laughs> so you actually need so a he, nine wait, or so better. So he grappled Chris's character through the net. You know what? Yes. <laughs> Yes. That's how bad Chris was. Yes. <laughs> Makes sense. We are I'm out of my element. <laughs> Alright, we are going to do damage. Half for extra damage one level. Okay. okay. Alright, I think that's I think I did this correctly. Okay. Uh, wait, oh it says too many levels. Oh wait, no no no, okay. Do I use assets? So, okay, Asset yeah, I see, two. I see. Asset two, I did that. Alright. Um, I think I did this right. Let's see. Come on. Oh, no! oh, I, hate to see it. I slip and fall on the blood. Damn no, no, it's not that bad. You just miss. <laughs> you just got miss. things for the slip and fall on the blood. <laughs> no, it is I quite miss. slippery. <laughs> Dang it. I'll help me to do it. <laughs> Chris, what are you doing? <laughs> um,. I hate to just keep doing the same thing. Well, I guess I'm gonna try to stab him with my All with right. my cutlass. Um, let's see. I'm trying to figure out what pool I should use. Probably might. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do. I mean, uh, no, your might's looking pretty pretty not good. Nope. So is my speed though. Yeah. We should just do yeah, a flat, you're right. flat roll. Without any and if he hits you, if he hits you, he takes it from your might. Right. Like, so if you're not gonna zero out that speed, I wouldn't. I don't know, dude. That, oh, that's the game. That's the game right there. Risk yeah. Is reward. Do it. We will be <laughs> all right. <laughs> Which end of the candle do you burn from? Do it. Um. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll. We still have one asset, right? <clears throat> Two, because days and net. Okay. Yeah, this should be good. Change. Nine or better. That's all you need. Nine or better. So do the damage. All right. End him. I love that this is kind of, it feels like gambling in a way. No. Like no. placing a bet oh. in my roll. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Uh, wait. <laughs> Did I succeed wait. though? Oh, it says ease by four steps should be. So we did two assets, and you did an effort to yeah. ease the task. Oh. Yeah. So you actually needed, you got it. So yeah, the lowest you could get, you got. Mm -hmm. You only did two damage. He's got one, one hit point HP. left. I... Justin. So I gave him okay. a paper cut. <laughs> I think it's your moment. It's your moment. Oh man, I was gonna restrain him. Yes, I'm gonna make you have to do it. <laughs> I'm gonna try to restrain him. So it's just an easy shot. <laughs> so here's the deal. There's that. Mm, now we're getting into some of the wordiness of the rules here is because you can technically only have a maximum of two assets. Uh, However, the yeah. net, the net's not an asset. And in fact, neither is your bash. Both of those are hindering the giant. Neither of those are actually. Mm. So you could actually things that say like, oh, it hinders these things, whatever. You can stack those infinitely. Um, Nice. This is 
That's that's the meta game right there. So uh, restraining would give Kai an asset. Do you want to roll? Give me a strength roll for that. Like might. Yeah, might. A might based roll, so you can. Oh, oh motherfuckers! Oh, <laughs> at least it's not a one. <laughs> that much, Kai. I think I think it's your moment. Okay, as another leap, same as shot a distraction. to the temple. <laughs> okay, so how do I actually roll to like add the thing? So that every time Alt? I click, Alt click, it click just rolls the... it. So what happens if you just click on it without doing that real quick? It just rolls it. Yeah, we're Ignore not gonna that. Not yeah, we're not gonna oh, that. Yeah, that one out of the way. Oh. <laughs> You're on. Uh... <laughs> You're on one of those fake computers. Um, Maybe, yeah, but when I all click do other things that work. I don't know, it's <laughs> probably... Fake computer. Oh wait, I, I got it, I got it. I wasn't clicking alt hard enough. Um, okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> can I... <laughs> okay, base difficulty is five. Yep. Cool. Mm -hmm. Two yeah. assets. Might as well speed, do it. Uh, assets to effort to ease task. What does that mean? Uh, that means that you would spin from your speed pool to make it easier to do. You should do that. You should do that. Yeah, I'll do that. One. Effort for other use? No. Nope. Okay. Cool. Yay! All right. <laughs> <laughs> I moved. It was like looking at that one for a second. Yeah. <laughs> And he is down for the count. Minus Yay. two. And the crowd goes wild. Wow. <laughs> 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 All right. So I think we've got kind of the general gist of like, this is how combat works, but everything works that exact same way, right? Like um, if you're investigating a murder, if you're doing anything, it's all very much like that. So um, I liked it. Yeah. Combat felt dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it did. Yeah. I also really like setting up the roll. It's like you can kind of choose how much you want to like bet on your roll. I, I like that a lot. And it, yeah. it kind of encourages everyone to like kind of plan and plot together, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I found it. I didn't know that might like if you take damage, it comes from your might pool because I added absolutely nothing to it. Huh? So it's just <laughs> it's just seven. Uh, so shit. But I've that's that tracks for me. <laughs> Not having any hit points. And so it it is that's the first one. And then after your might pull is zero, you're what do they call it? There's a there's a checkbox for it somewhere. Um you are impaired. And basically everything you try to do is hindered whenever that hits zero. And then your speed starts is the next thing. So if you start taking damage, then it comes from your speed mm -hmm. pool. And then after that, and how do you, you die? Uh, all three uh, all go to three. zero. Oh, at least my intelligence is twenty. It'll take a while. Yeah. Dang, you're super smart. Uh, but yeah. if we run into like a mental, you know, like a mind flare kind of situation, then it starts with the intellect. You know? Yeah, then I'll be on the So they, yeah, yeah. So depending on their attack, it could go differently, but defaultly it goes to might first. Any mind control, I'm gonna be very weak. My intellect is eight. And not only not only is your intellect eight, but your character abilities like, <laughs> even worse. Your yeah, you haven't you literally have an inability in that. So that's where the luck inability pays off, in is. intellect. Yeah, in, in intellect in defense. defense. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so like mind control damage. type shit. <laughs> got it. So, so um, so you've yeah. got something to work with <laughs> with that. One thing I should have done before this fight, just to make things a little bit more dynamic and like give you all a little bit more options, I should have given you a bunch more ciphers. So let's go ahead and do ciphers real quick for everyone. Yeah. We'll start uh, with Chris. Chris, these are random. You do not get to choose. Ooh. I roll 100. You get a chalky po No, I'm, I'm just oh. doing it. Chalky you get a potion. chalky potion. Chalky of milk. Those are going to Kai. Of explosive poison. <laughs> oh, that sounds perfect for you. It is. It nice. does show it's going to Kai. Yeah. Wait, to oh, me? My or bad. To... I, I just had the wrong character selected when I typed him. So yeah, uh, no, you have a explosive poison. 
And you can drag that directly onto your character sheet. Who, me oh, or Kai? Fun. That is you, Chris. Chris. Okay. All right. And you oh, have a yeah. magic, magical transference tattoo. Oh, I thought it was just a tattoo. It is a tattoo. <laughs> That's not just Ooh, a fuck yeah. pirate tattoo. <laughs> so it's like a, a tattoo you can like empower, like you can slap your arm and it puts something in stasis. So drag stasis keeper onto your character sheet as well. Oh, right. see how you, you all can do that, right? Like yeah, you can yeah. drag it directly from chat into your character sheet. Mm-hmm. Sweet. All right, Justin, you ready for yours? Hell yeah, let's do this. I like stuff. That's why I liked Borderlands and all those games. Mm-hmm. Ooh. A leather scroll and a carved bone. And the leather scroll is... Oh, it won't let me take it because it's Chris's. Uh, oh, will it really not? No, no, it will. It, the, oh. the, the first two are just like the the, the vibe like form. yeah the form. what they are yeah okay. so the leather scroll gives you wings Ooh. it is it is <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome bolt. for 10 minutes i could uh running speed while flying nice i'll be in armor <laughs> playing around <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the second one the carved bones allow you temporal visions Oh, that's neat. Uh, Ryan. Ooh, a wood room plate. I got a hundred. And, and a paper scroll. Shock attack. I like that. Psychic. Oh, that's per. I like that too. That works great for you. Yeah, with the communication. Yeah. To anyone it, they know. It'd be a waste on my oh, guy. Wow. Okay, so a. These last, cool. these three are Kai's, because Kai gets three. Lucky. Lucky, lucky. Yeah. So a brand, like branded like a horse? Next yeah, I think you literally like it's not the same way like, one of Chris's is like a temporary tattoo. Like yours is like a brand that sits on your skin that will it'll the brand will disappear when you activate the ability. Huh? Oh, it's like thorns. So the crystal that for the next a retaliation. Huh, these are fun. Repair unit. Huh. Hmm. So the levels that are on the uh, ciphers, is that like just oh. from the item or is it kind of random? Well, hell. Because I, I got Say a level again. four and a level five cipher. It's random off of a 1d6 plus two, I think. Yeah. Okay. Oh. And it, it should roll them when you drag them on. Yeah, your it did. Yeah. And that'll matter mm. if based on how you're trying to use it. And yeah. Like that. Sometimes it does mm. matter and sometimes it doesn't. And yeah. I actually rolled uh, fantastic ciphers rather than fantasy ciphers. That's my bad. Um, um, but whatever. We'll, we'll use these these first times. <laughs> these are fantasy ciphers. If I we... should probably actually read you all of them, huh? <laughs> yeah. Nah. Neat. Sure, we'll, we'll, we'll redo them the next time we have to do things. Wait, read. Why are we redoing them? Uh, we... <laughs> From the wrong table. <laughs> Yeah, I pulled oh. the wrong tip. It's yeah. fine. We can use these as is. Just flavor them as fantasy type things. But I rolled... They have two tables. There's fantastic ciphers and fantasy ciphers. Oh. I easily confused, yeah. I um, was wondering what how useful a repair unit would be in this setting. But I can have like a floating chest if I want to. So that's kind of cool. I will... You want me to... I'll redo that repair unit. Uh oh, that, that sounds very. Wait, why is yeah. someone's trying to send me a temporal oh, viewer? That's me. I, I was trying to figure out what I was doing. I refuse. <laughs> I don't want it. But, How do you wait? Y'all are trading items. How does that even work? Uh, no, there's, there's, there's oh, yeah, a trade you item button. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> the arrows. No shit. Yeah. I got poison. 
Get away from me with that. <laughs> Not only poison, an explosive poison, right? <laughs> yeah. I have poison resistance, so <laughs> don't try it. <laughs> And so, yeah, the, the, the idea is the ciphers are, like, temporary abilities that you can just grab and use, and they they are what, like, when you're like, okay, I'm just going to keep swinging my sword, right? Like, ciphers are meant to spice that up. When would we get new ciphers? If we use our ciphers? Constantly. Okay, cool. Yeah, they want you to have as many ciphers as they can. You're supposed to be handing them out, like, they're candy, and then, like, we have to get rid of them or whatever, but... Yeah, you definitely. Have a limit of, yeah. Supposed to have a lot of them, but you can only have two. Uh, except for Kai, who gets three. Let's see. So if we don't use them, we can't get have new more. One. Yeah. Yeah. Can I find some creative uses for items? All right. Cool. The cool. So system. we're at eight forty-eight. Uh, my time. I realize that's almost 10 o'clock Central Time. Should we call it here and actually kick things off next time? Yeah, that sounds great. Sounds good for yeah. me. Nice teaser. Alright. Well then, well, it has been great, but we're going to start the outro process. Uh, why don't we kick it off with Ryan, who is actually the, the MC of the stream and I just usurped that. No, you're good. <laughs> uh... Hey y'all, this has been Raven's Realm Tabletop on our Session Zero for uh, the Cypher system, uh, playing the um, the Crypt of the Everflame. We'll be starting the module uh, next week. Uh, I have been Bloom, the speaker that is doomed but is also idolized by millions. Uh, I will pass go. it over <laughs> to Chris. Hey, I'm Chris. I was playing Remus Riot Forge, the dishonorable explorer who may or may not be a pirate. Um, if you want to follow me, I'm at Chris Gamble 37 on Instagram. And uh, yeah, go to ravensrealmtabletop.com if you would like to see all of our links for our various platforms. And uh, let's go, Kai. Hello, everybody. I'm Kai. I have been creating Kagwin Summerwind, who is an inquisitive adept, a uh, little druid in the woods. I'm very excited for next session when we get to um, get to play. I have no social media to plug, so <laughs> moving on. To You're not on X, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> I have an account. I'm <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm on it. Hey, this is Justin. Um, I do a lot of the music here, so if you want to hear some of the music, you can go to bandlab.com slash mixushi3. Um, I've also released an album back in February and then re-released it quickly after. But anyway, uh, you can find me on any of your Spotify, iTunes, anything like that under Project Born. Uh, B-O-U-R-N-E, like my last name. So Project Born. Haha, <laughs> get it. Um, and yeah, you can find me on any of those things. And uh, yeah, who else hasn't gone? Just Brandon. I'll take it. All right, Brandon, pass the baton. All right. Hey, I'm Brandon. I've been your GM for the evening. Uh, you can find me on the various socials at the BWT. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to be finally playing the Cypher system and stuff like that. That was... Uh, been a, I've been pitching it for a while and just hadn't actually pulled the trigger. So, uh, yeah, catch us next time where we actually start Crypt of the Everflame. Um, join the Discord uh, over at, what's it, ravensrealmtabletop.com? That's right. It has, has the links to it. It has a link um, to it. And I, you know, I'm the GM of, well, one of the GMs of the Ravens Marches campaign. Make sure to check out that. We do a West Marches campaign. It's uh, in the Worlds Without Numbers system, though. All right. Right. that's it yeah uh one last yeah. shout out uh to tabletop rpg music uh which has been used for the foundry uh music tracks that you've been hearing today um but yeah so thank you to them just want to give yeah, them check a out their huge Patreon. shout out yep all right we'll see y'all next week thank y'all for watching bye everybody Peace. thank you love you bye bye, bye. bye. love you <laughs> sweetie bye <laughs> <laughs> See you, darling. Goodbye. <laughs>